College Football Week 8 Playoff Predictions. This is where we give you what our top four is going to be at the end of the season based on what has happened so far and what we think will happen going forward. We're going to do a different one every week. It's brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can find more information on all six of their wonderful sports books over at tunicatravel.com. Don't forget, visit winningcureseverything.com for all of the stuff that we give you, our picks, our recaps, et cetera, et cetera. There's also a football picks contest. Go play that thing on Tuesdays. We'll get to that later on. Uh, if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button for us. That helps out. If you're on the podcast, hit the subscribe button for us. <laughs> One way or another, just subscribe. It'll help us out. Uh, let's jump into the playoff predictions. How do you want to do this? You want to do it one through four? Uh, I guess it's more like we know who number one is. We right know now. Who number one is Bama. Now, now, and hang on, we're we're giving these predictions what we think the end of the year is after this point so far, right? Oh no, we're predicting what's going to happen. We're predicting what is going to happen, and not just what's going to happen, but also what the committee is going to say. Yeah, because they're like we can think a lot of things are going to happen, be right about that, but the committee do something different than they normally do. Yes, yes, or do something right. we disagree with. Yeah. So this is what the dis. All right. So th- this is what we think the committee will do as of this point in time, going forward. Like we, what we think, based on what's happening right now and what will happen in the future. Does that explain anything at all? Did I just completely like right. <laughs> throw everything? So mine, up? <laughs> mine, I'm going to do. Mine has a theme, and the theme is rematch. Okay, rematches. Oh, okay. I, I see. I my see number, where you're going with this. My number one seed is Alabama. Let me guess. Your four seed will be Clemson. My four seed will be Clemson. Yeah. And the reason I think Clemson is because, well, let me just get. I'll give you my one through four. I've got Alabama. I've got Notre Dame. I've got Michigan. And I've got Clemson, and I think the committee will put a one-loss Michigan team over an undefeated Clemson team because the Big Ten is that much better than the ACC. I think... Would you agree with that? No. You don't think they'll do that? I don't think they will do that because they did not do that in 20... God bless America. Because then you get Clemson... It's happened before. Cause you get, then you get Clemson Bama 4. Well, here's the thing. And, and I think, you also get Notre Dame-Michigan rematch because that was a game that we saw at the beginning of the season. And I kind of would like to see those two teams, these exact same I think they coaches, want to avoid that if at all possible. Well, here's the thing. You, you, get, you don't want to match up because Alabama-Clemson has happened every year, right? Like it's just end of the year in the playoffs, three straight years. They don't want it to be four. If it ends up being four – then okay, but they want to try and avoid that. Here is what I believe. Uh, uh, you know what it was? It was, you're right, a one-loss team was ranked ahead of. Ohio State was it? No. It was Florida State was 13-0 and in 2014. And I'll never get the years right. I'll never get the years, so that's just worthless asking me. Oh, it was 20, I have, oh, 2014. 2014. So Alabama was a one-loss team. Pac-12, uh, Oregon was a one-loss team. They were the first two seeds. Florida State was completely undefeated, and the ACC was terrible, yep. and they were a three seed. So so there's precedent for it. So I would have Alabama at one, and then I would have an undefeated Notre Dame at two, but I think they would put Clemson at three. Now, remember, Ohio State was the four seed that year with one loss, but it was like a terrible loss to an ACC team. It was a bad loss. <laughs> yeah. No, it was like Wake Forest or something. No, no, no. It was a 6-6 six and six Virginia Tech team. That was, yeah. Okay. Uh, at home. So, I think that they would keep Michigan at four because you would want Alabama-Michigan and then Clemson-Notre Dame. Like, and at that point, it doesn't really matter what the seating is with Clemson and Notre Dame. No. Um, it, I, the only thing that would change is the jersey color, right? Yeah, it doesn't and who matter. cares? But I, I do think that Alabama-Michigan, Notre Dame-Clemson would give you better ratings and I think, remember, this is all just a TV show. Which like, makes are, the entire thing bull, by the way. <laughs> yes. It, it, for, I mean, to be fair, yeah, it's completely crap. It's, Absolutely. It's just, it's just a sitcom. But if you want the absolute best top four, I am still waiting. Like, if Clemson has one of those goofy losses, 
I could a hundred percent see them tossing Texas up here because if you have a top four with Alabama, Texas, Notre Dame, and Michigan, I mean that is absurd ratings. We both are still I'm, of the opinion, I'm the that, opinion UCF, that UCF. I think nobody in the country is going to come within two touchdowns of Alabama, so it does not matter who they play. So that's the excuse to you. You kill two birds with one stone. A, you let the little guy in, and you make everybody happy because you finally gave him a chance. They get smoked by Alabama, so then you get the excuse going four years to come to say, we invited you last year. Remember in 2018 when we let you come in and you didn't do anything good? Yeah, we're not going to let you in again. So so you get you get all the things you need by letting UCF in because there is no four seed that is going to compete with Alabama. The only issue there is that the power conferences would then be giving more money to the AAC. But and, and, I'll and t- I, but I'm, I'm not I'm, against that. You know how no, I feel I'm, about that. No, I'm not against that, that either, but completely. I believe that they would be. And if I was the AAC, I would sue for monopoly rights. Yeah, and, and then I think I would that's take one this reason big bastard down. I think that's one reason why this is a possibility because not the AAC, but uh whoever would be hired by the group of 5 uh could come in and talk about monopoly and and all that kind of stuff. So, um so I think UCF has a a shot. I am of the opinion that they are actually not going to go undefeated this year. I think they will get beaten by Cincy, Temple, South Florida, you know, Houston in the AAC championship game, something like that. But we'll see. Which we'll four? see. My four are Alabama, Notre Dame, Clemson, and Michigan. So Alabama, oh, we've gets, got the we've got, we got the, the same, same four. Ones. I didn't think you would have Michigan in there. No, I. I I believe in uh, I believe in Michigan. I think that their defense is going to stomp on Ohio State. I think like, they're going to stomp on everybody. I, not I think so not too. in Alabama, but everybody else. I mean, it, uh, I would love to see them play this Notre Dame team again. I would love to see them play question, the Alabama uh, offense. Honest, honest question. I think you'll get to if they play Notre Dame first. Honest question. What do you think neutral site this Michigan team versus this Notre Dame team from what we see right now? What's that line? Michigan minus five. Michigan's favored, and it's more than a field goal. No, oh, yeah, that's why you feel because I felt the same way, and I was wondering, am I just drinking the Kool Aid that much? No, no, it is like I Michigan think, is I think dominant. That, that's that's why I think it's okay to jump Clemson. Well, because even even though Notre Dame won that first game, if you look back at the Michigan, the post, dom- yeah, Michigan well, the post had game all the stats. Uh, efficiency and whatnot, yeah, all, Michigan, yeah. uh, their win probability afterwards was like. 65 70 percent like they would win the game 70 percent of the time with the same stats uh you just had crazy stuff that happened in that first game bottom line though notre dame did win the game and that is a no, humongous win not knocking them i still got a um, second they're gonna stay in second place until they lose because that win is something nobody else will get to. the only way a team can have a better win is if a team beats alabama that's the, it. the that's, biggest that's, win that's the only lsu is the only one that really has an opportunity to get a bigger win Notre Dame can get two really big wins this weekend. One, by beating Navy. Uh, but two, if Stanford beats Wazoo. Yeah, that would probably help. That would help a whole lot. Uh, Michigan's going to enjoy a week off. So is Alabama. So is LSU. So I think, I mean, gracious. this is it. We went a little long on this, but yeah. I mean, we got the same four. It just depends on the... Uh, the matchup that you want. So I've got Alabama against Michigan and then Clemson against Notre Dame. I would like to see the rematches. A, I could care less about the Clemson game, but I think Alabama beats everybody by two touchdowns, so it doesn't matter who you put. I think the ACC is so bad nobody's beating Clemson. I would sure love for Vodtech too, at the end of the year. Boy, that would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know there's a chance Virginia could win the ACC, or at least the Coastal? Then then, then Clemson's not going on the field. They're not getting beat. You probably need a right. better team to win the South or the Coastal. You're probably right. All right, that's going to wrap up our college football week eight playoff predictions.